So next up we have Andre Pavlovic, who's an associate professor in plant and plants at Polak University in the Czech Republic. He studies the electrical sig signaling and regulation of enzyme activities in carnivorous plants. And he's gonna be talking to us today about the regulation of enzyme activities. So let's welcome him. so perfect like in the previous speaker because I am from the Czech Republic and uh, I would like to show you the results we obtain uh, during rec recent uh, years in uh, our laboratory some of them uh, were published uh, and some uh, some results are uh, new uh, I will talk about the regulation of enzyme activities in uh, carnivorous plants and uh, you know, uh, our bodies and uh, our digestive system uh, don't produce the enzymes constitutively but uh, in response to food. So if our eyes see or if our nose smells and uh, our uh, uh, tongue tastes the food or if the food is in our stomach, uh, the mechanical and the chemical stimulation uh, induce the secretion of, of uh, digestive fluid and digestive uh, enzymes. And this is regulated by our neuronal and the hormonal systems. And, and the carnivorous plants uh, do exactly the same. So they use also the electrical signals and they use also the chemical signals from the prey uh, for, for regulation uh, of enzyme uh, secretion. So uh, uh, we suggest that uh, uh, this is the resource saving strategy for carnivorous plants because enzymes are proteins and the proteins are composed of the amino acids and amino acids contain a lot of nitrogens and you know that the carnivorous plants grow in nitrogen or nutrient poor environment uh, so uh, it does not pay off to produce the digestive enzymes in there is, if there is nothing to, to eat or if there is no prey uh, in the trap. So, uh, I expect that uh, everybody in this auditorium knows this plant, it's the most famous carnivorous plant, the, fe the Venus flytrap. And the Venus flytrap uh, has the modified leaves and you can see uh, in this picture the, the sensitive trichomes, which uh, if you touch the sensitive trichomes, the action potential is, is uh, generated and uh, if these uh, trigger hairs are touched twice, within 20 seconds at room temperature, uh, two actions potentials are generated, uh, what results in the very rapid trap closure. And using the, the sophisticated equipment, you can see what's happened during this rapid uh, trap closure and during generation of electrical signals. This is uh, our study published in, uh, in Annals of Botany in 2010. And, uh, we used, uh, or, or the carnivorous plants photosynthesize like all green plants around us. So, and the photosynthesis is the process which is affected the most during, during the trap closure. And we use chlorophyll fluorescence imaging uh, to see what's happened on the level of the photosystem 2. Photosystem 2 is a big pigment protein complex embedded in the thylakoid membranes in the chloroplasts. And the photosystem 2 converts the light energy into the chemical energy and the oxygen is released during this process. And uh, the efficiency of the conversion uh, we call as a quantum yield of photosystem 2. And using the chlorophyll fluorescence imaging you can, uh, you can uh, visualize this, uh, this effectivity. <coughs> as you can see here in the Venus flytrap in the open traps, here in the red colors, the red colors is this false color. Uh, indicate that the efficiency is around 80% of the energy conversion. But during the rapid trap closure, you can see that the efficiency uh, 
is rapidly decreased to almost 40 or 50 percent. So the photosystem 2 is or the reactions uh, in the photosystem 2 are affected by the rapid trap closure and electrical signals propagation. And then after rapid trap closure, you can see a, a, reco a slow recover of, of, of the efficiency. What is interesting is that these changes are confined only to the trap and don't reach the photosynthetic, the lower portion of the leaf. So uh, this is consistent with the findings that the electrical or actions potentials electrical signals uh, propagates only in the trap and don't spread to, to, to the lower photosynthetic, uh, photosynthetic <coughs> lamina. And we use also a different technique to measure the photosynthesis uh, using an infrared gas analyzer. Uh, you can measure the carbon dioxide uptake in the photosynthesis. And we found the same. So <coughs> here you can see that in this picture, there is quite good photosynthesis around, uh, around the four micromoles of carbon dioxide assimilated on the meter square of leaf per second. And during the trap closure, there is a rapid knockout of photosynthesis almost to zero, and then slow recover of, of, the, of the photosynthesis. And if this experiment, so we use two techniques, the chlorophyll fluorescence imaging and infrared get gas analyzer, and we found the same rapid knockout of photosynthesis during rapid trap closure in Venus flytrap. And if these experiments are repeated in the dark, you can measure the rate of respiration. Yeah? The, the plants also respire the, the sugars and uh, release the carbon dioxide. And during this experiment in the dark, you can measure the rate of respiration and you can see also very rapid increase of the respiration. So the Venus flytrap do something like a deep breath because it's a high energy demand for, for the electrical signaling. Our brain consumes a lot of energy uh, from, from our body when, when the action's potentials are propagated inside. And Venus flytrap do exactly the same. So it needs a lot of energy for, for electrical signal propagation. And uh, I will show you what is it good for. So if, you know, if, if the prey is successfully captured, the trap, oops, sorry, the trap is not hermetically sealed immediately, but there are still small gaps. And this is a chance for a small insect to escape from the trap. But if the large prey is captured, it moves inside and uh, touches the trigger hairs and more than 100 actions potentials are generated during this retention, retention phase of, uh, of, or during the retention of the prey. And uh, in this picture you can see uh, the one hour of recording of electrical signaling. So we attach the electrode to Venus flytrap trap and we measured, um, we observed what, what happened. And we found that almost more than 100 actions potentials are generating during prey retention. And this is only true for the local leaf. Uh, no actions potentials are were, or were recorded in, in the systemic leaf. So the systemic leaf is another leaf which had not captured the prey on the same plant. So the electrical signals are confined only to the, to, the, to the trap which trapped the insect. And in response to this electrical signaling, the trap hermetically sealed, you know, and the digestive fluid is, is released. Uh, we repeated we repeat the, uh, the same experiment using the chlorophyll fluorescence imaging and uh, gas exchange or using the infrared gas analyzer and we found the same very rapid inhibition of photosystem 2 reaction during the photosynthesis. You can see here this blue color corresponds to almost 40 percent, the red color corresponds to to 80% of uh, efficiency of conversion of light into the chemical energy into the photosynthesis. 
In this case, the trap don't move, yeah? It's still closed. So this indicates that uh, the electrical signaling is responsible for this uh, rapid inhibition of, of photosynthesis. Because I showed you that many, many actions potentials are generated in, in response to uh, prey struggling inside the trap. And uh, this is, uh, this you can also see uh, the rapid inhibition of uh, photosynthesis uh, using the gas exchange analyzer and also very rapid increase of respiration. So there is really huge energy demand for, for this electrical signaling in Venus flytrap. And uh, in the next, next experiments, uh, we uh, collected the traps hermetically sealed traps, also control traps for comparison, empty, open control traps, and also systemic traps, so and other traps which had not captured any insect on the same plant, and we analyzed the phytohormone tissue level in these traps. And what we found is a huge accumulation of uh, the phytohormones from the group of jasmonates. We analyzed also some other phytohormones like the abscisic acid, indolyl acetic acid was is, what is uh, the auxin and the salicylic acid and the concentration of these phytohormones were not, were not changed in response to food. But the concentration of the jasmonates was uh, really huge in, in a traps which were hermetically sealed and contain the prey. And here you can see the structure of, of these phytohormones. This is the jasmonic acid. This is uh, it's a conjugate with uh, one amino acid and it's called the jasmonic acid isoleucine conjugate. And this is the precursor of jasmonic acid known as uh, OPDA. And you can see that the level of these phytohormones, mainly the jasmonic acid and jasmonic acid isoleucine conjugate was increased during the first hour after the prey capture. So there is a really huge upregulation of the concentration of, of these phytohormones. And the precursor OPDA uh, was, uh, its, its level was increased in, in a later time points, but, but still was, was increased. So this indicates that the, the jasmonates, the hormones from, from the group of jasmonates are upregulated. And so, what is it? Or what, what is the jasmonic acid? What the phytohormones? So, uh, jasmonic acid is a lipid-based plant phytohormones, and is activated by an enzyme called JAR in this reaction. And in this reaction, the isoleucine is conjugated to jasmonic acid, and forming isoleucine conjugate of jasmonic acid. And this compound is bioactive. So this means that this compound can bind to the receptor. We know the receptor of the jasmonic acid, so it exactly fits to, to the active site of the receptor and trigger the physiological response. And what is the physiological response? In ordinary plants, in green plants, all green plants around us, uh, the jasmine is regulate a wide range of processes ranging from the grow, photosynthesis, and the reproductive development. But in particular, jasmonates are very important in a plant defense against the herbivore, pathogen, or in response to wounding. Yeah. Jasmonates, usually in the green plants, the jasmonates are produced in response to wounding. So if you cut the leaf or if you wound the leaf, the jasmine level is, is increased. And it is known that uh, in ordinary green plants, the jasmonates are accumulated in response to generation of electrical signaling. This is one paper published in 2013 in the Science. And the authors find, found that uh, after the herbivore attack, in this case the caterpillar, which wound the plant tissue during the feeding, the plant generates the electrical signal. This electrical signal spread to all leaves within the plant, so to systemic leaves. And in response to this, and all sites which receive this electrical signal <laughs> accumulate the jasmonates. 
And the just monades trigger the defense. Yeah. And the defense means that the plant starts to produce some compounds, secondary metabolites like uh, nicotine in tobacco. This is the well-known example. And we know of thousands of secondary metabolites which, which, uh, uh, which are repellent, let's say, for the insects. So uh, this is, this is what's, what's uh, happened and what do the, the jasmonates in uh, the ordinary plants and how they trigger the physiological response. So in this picture, uh, you can see the regulation of the gene expression uh, triggered by, by jasmonate. So jasmonate triggered the physiological response by activating of gene expression. So they activate the gene expression or genes which encode enzymes which synthesize the secondary metabolites like the nicotine in tobacco or they uh, induce the expression of some <coughs> proteins like pathogenesis related proteins which have the role in the pathogenesis in defense mechanisms in plants. And, as, and we call these genes as adjustment as <coughs> genes because they are expressed only in the presence of the adjustment acid in the tissue or its isoleucine conjugate. And as all genes, these genes are, are, are these genes co are composed of the two parts. The first part is the coding region of the genes which encode uh, which encode the structure of the protein, so the order of the nucleotides in DNA uh, predict the, the structure of the protein. And the second part is the regulatory sequence known as promoter, which bind uh, RNA polymerase, which transcribe the genes. And it also binds, this, this promoter also binds uh, proteins, which we call the transcription mm -hmm. factors. And uh, the transcription factors can turn off or turn on the gene. So the transcription factor which turn on the gene is an activator, and the transcription factor which turn off the genes we call the repressor. And one of such repressor is, is a JAS protein, which if it, if it is bind, is, it's bound to, to promoter, it inhibits the transcription of the genes. So this is typical in the resting state in the plant, so if nothing happens here. Yeah. But if the plant is under the attack of the herbivore, or if, if it is uh, wounded, then the level of the jasmonates, jasmonic acid isoleucine conjugate is increased. And this phytohormone bind to jas repressor and together with the coronatin insensitive one protein form a complex which mediate the degradation of this repressor. And this means that the genes are released from repression and can be transcribed. So the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter together with the MIG2 positive or activator positive transcription factor and transcribe the genes to mRNA and then the mRNA is translated on the ribosomes to, to the structure of the protein. <coughs> and now we got the objectives. What physiological response trigger the jasmonates in the carnivorous plants? Yeah, this, this is the first question. The second question is how the carnivorous plants recognize the insect attack from the potential food? Because in both cases, the jasmonates are produced and are accumulated. And the last one is how can we the jasmonate signaling turn off? So I would like to show you the results and answer this, this question during my talk. So we set up the following experiments. Uh, the trap of Venus flytrap was mechanically stimulated every three minutes with small stick, 40 times, so altogether two hours of mechanical stimulation. And the trap was attached to the electrode, and you can see the generation of actions potential in response to, to mechanical stimulation with a small plastic stick in the local leaf, but nothing happened in the systemics. So in other leaves within the, the same rosette of plant. And you can see here the time-lapse video. 
that during these two hours, the hermetic of sealing of the trap is induced and digestive fluid is released inside. And we repeated this stimulation, but the next stimulation was not mechanical, but we wounded or we pierced the leaf with needle at the same period. And we measured also the electrical signals, which are exactly the same. The actions potential, so the same actions potentials are generated in response to wounding of trap tissue. And I show you the second video. Yeah, this is the needle. And you can see that <laughs> this time lapse video within two hours, the trap is again hermetically sealed. And what is the most interesting, inside it is a lot of digestive fluid. The same response as in response to, to mechanical stimulation uh, we simulated with, with the plastic stick. And after two hours of wounding and mechanical stimulation, we collected the, di we collected the traps for the phytohormone analysis. And what we found, the similar result like I showed you before, high accumulation of jasmonic acid and its isoleucine conjugate in the case of mechanical stimulation, and also high accumulation in response to wounding. Yeah. Here are the fat traps, mechanostimulated, wounded. Here are the control traps, open without any stimulation, and the systemic traps, so other traps within the same rosette of, of the leaf. So, this indicates that mechanical stimulation as well as wounding can induce the accumulation of this very important bioactive molecule in the trap. And in the next experiment, we collected the trap tissue uh, and uh, we performed uh, polymerase chain reaction, quantitative polymerase cha chain reaction, PCR. Uh, which quantified the gene expression. And we focused on the two genes uh, in the Venus flytrap. The first one is a dionine, what is actually a cysteine protease. Protease, what is very important enzyme for digestion of proteins in Venus flytrap. And the second enzyme encode the kitinase is a very important enzyme for the chitin digestion because you know that the, the insect exoskeleton is composed. Uh, from the chitin. And uh, you can see that uh, mechanical stimulation as well as the wounding rapidly increase the transcriptions of both genes. There is more than more than a thousands fold increase in, in, in transcriptions. It's absolutely huge, huge induction. So these genes are rapidly transcribed in response to, to accumulation of, of the jasmonic acid in the tissue. And what is the most important is that if the jasmonic acid is added exogenously, yeah, so if I uh, put small drops on the trap of the jasmonic acid, then you can find also increase and upregulation of the gene expression of both genes, what indicates the jasmonic acid is induced in uh, or is involved in induction of, of the gene expression. And Two days later, 48 hours later, we collected the digestive fluid inside the trap in response to wounding and in response to mechanical stimulation and also in response to application of the jasmonic acid. And the digestive fluid was, uh, I, uh, was uh, separated uh, in polyacryl amid gel electrophoresis, so we separated the proteins inside the digestive fluid based on their size. So here is the size in the kilodaltons of the proteins and here you can see the proteins stained with uh, the silver. Uh, the proteins secreted in response to mechanical stimulation and wounding. And you can see that the profile of the secreted proteins is more or less the same. Yeah? As well as the mechanical stimulation, the wounding induced the secretion of the same proteins. And uh, here in the last lane you can see 
the protein profile uh, secreted in response to application of jasmonic acid. And the intensity of staining is uh, or corresponds to the amount of the proteins in the gel. Also, so you can see that in response to jasmonic acid, there is the highest concentration of, of these uh, proteins. And uh, we generated also specific antibodies against these proteins we, we know in Venus flytrap and we want to detect the proteins in, in, in the gel. And we generated three antibodies. The first one is uh, the cysteine protease, then the aspartic protease, and the type 1 kitinase. And uh, using this, so these antibodies bind to the protein, and you can visualize uh, the band uh, in, in the gel. This technique is called the Western blot. And based on the intensity of the staining or based on the intensity of the signal you can also quantify the protein and uh, we found that uh, what corresponds with the data from the qpcr that the protein level in response to mechanical and uh, stimulation and wounding is more or less uh, the same and is much higher in response to uh, exogenous application of jasmonic acid so these data uh, confirmed uh, our previous data from the gene expression analysis and these are the proteins so this is the end product of the gene expression yeah? and this data nicely match uh, together so mechanical stimulation as well as the wounding can induce expression of, of these genes and we also measured the, the enzyme activities of these proteins and we found that the digestive fluid ha uh, had <coughs> Uh, very high mechanical, uh, very high uh, proteolytic uh, activity in response to mechanical stimulation and wounding, as well as uh, endokitinase activity. And again, you can see that the highest activity was measured in response to exogenous application of, of the jasmonic acid, what indicates that the jasmonic acid is involved. And last year, uh, we published the paper on the Cape Sandu where we found a very interesting and very similar, uh, very similar uh, signaling pathway. So this is a Cape Sandu. Uh, we generated the actions potential in response to, to prey capture. Later, you can find uh, the accumulation again of the jasmonates and then uh, the expression of, of the digestive enzyme is triggered. Uh, I talked about this in the queue in the last ICPS uh, conference in, in London, actually. So there is, but, but there is uh, one difference in, in response to Venus flytrap, which is very interesting for the Cape Sandu. And the difference is that if, if the trap of the Sandu is wounded with the needle, different type of electrical signals is generated. In the Venus flight, the electrical signals are the same, actions, potentials. But in, in, a, in a sandy plant, there is a different electrical signals. And what is the most interesting is that this signal spread to all leaves within the plants. So in Cape Sandy, you can induce the secretion of digestive fluid. You can induce the accumulation of the jasmonates in all leaves in response to wounding. But in response to food, the actions potentials are generated only to the tentacles which have a contact with the prey. So they are not systemic. This type of electrical signaling is not systemic and is localized only uh, to the prey position on the trap. But in response to wounding, they spread to all, plant, to, to all leaves in the plants and all these leaves produce a digestive enzyme. So it's something like we call the false alarm because there is nothing to, to eat. It's just plant tissue was just wounded. There is nothing to eat, there is no prey. And what does it mean? Uh, this probably indicates that the plant defense mechanism and botanical carnivory share the same signaling pathway and probably botanical carnivory has evolved from the plant defense mechanism because the plants use this jasmine signaling pathway before we know jasmonate's uh, signaling pathway in the moss. Yeah, so it's all signaling pathway and the carnivorous plants are uh, quite young in, in terms of evolution. And here you can see the sequence of events 
uh, detectable in the plant tissue in response to wounding or in response to herbivore. Uh, first, there are the changes of the membrane potential. So these are the electrical signals I show you on, on the Arabidopsis plant before. Followed by the changes of the calcium concentration in the cell. Uh, calcium is very important signaling molecule in plants. Then it is flowed usually by the increased production of the hydrogen peroxide, increased accumulation of two phytohormones, jasmonic acid and the salicylic acid. I showed you the jasmonic acid, the salicylic acid uh, don't change in carnivorous plant in response to prey capture. And these two phytohormones activate the gene expression what lead to metabolic changes. Yeah? And Exactly same signaling events we can found in carnivorous plants. So first there are the changes of the membrane potentials, the actions potentials in Venus flytrap or in sandew plants. Uh, there are some papers uh, which indicate that there are, that there are also changes in, in the calcium concentration. So the calcium concentration is usually increased in response to, to actions potential. Some papers which indicate that production of the hydrogen peroxide is triggered in response to prey. Jasmonate accumulation I showed you, and the jasmonate trigger the expression of carnivory related genes. And what is really interesting is that the digestive enzymes in carnivorous plants belong to the same group of proteins which use the plants for defense. So the chitinases, which carnivorous plants use for chitin digestion in the insect, use ordinary plants for defense against the fungi, because the cell wall of the fungi is composed of the chitin. Yeah. And there are many examples we can find that uh, these two digestive, that these two groups of, of proteins, digestive enzymes, and the plant defense proteins are similar and are related. And what we found is that they are triggered by the same signaling pathway. So the, the signaling pathway we call the jasmine signaling pathway. So uh, I showed you that the carnivorous plants can be easily misled by the wounding, which mimics mechanical stimulation from prey. But how the carnivorous plants know what they caught? And what keeps the digestive process running several days after prey death? And the response is the chemical signals. The chemical signals from prey are uh, really important and is uh, addition to, to mechanical stimulation uh, which induce the secretion of digestive fluid. And uh, we also set up the, the experiment where we investigated the, the, chemical, the chemical signals and uh, so we have the control open traps uh, mechanically stimulated traps by the same way as I showed you before, 40 times, so every three minutes mechanical stimulation altogether, two hours of stimulation, and the same mechanical stimulation and uh, the chitin edits to the traps, and the same mechanical stimulation and the proteins edit to the traps. So here we use the bovine serum albumin, what is the standard protein in, in the biochemistry. And the first thing, uh, we found is that after two days, uh, the traps were kept hermetically sealed, mainly in this treatment. So uh, this is the number of traps which reopen after 48 <coughs> hours from stimulation. So you can see that in the case of the BSA, zero, something, zero or one traps out of 10 was reopened. In the case of mechanical stimulation, uh, the number was around three out of 10 traps were reopened during, uh, during the two days. So this indicates that the BSA or the proteins uh, were the most effective to keeping the digestive process running for several days. And we analyzed uh, again the phytohormone tissue level uh, in, all these, in all these treatments and uh, we found that the jasmonase level was the highest in the response to treatment with the proteins. So this indicates that the, the proteins are also quite effective in induction of, of the jasmonate signaling pathway in carnivorous plants. And 
it's a nice addition to mechanical stimulation uh, of, of the prey. So we also analyzed uh, other plant hormones, but the only significant differences were, were found in, in this case of jasmonates. And we also collected the trap tissue for qPCR, so we quantified the, the gene expression and we found the highest gene expression in response to BSA. Yeah. So here you can see the different time points and you can see that the highest expression of the dionine, the cysteine protease and the chitinases was in response to mechanical stimulation and BSA. So this indicates again that the proteins are very effective in induction of digestive process in carnivorous plants and uh, we also look at the protein level so we again collected digestive fluid uh, separated in, in polyacrylamine gel electrophoresis and identified the enzyme, the cysteine protease, the aspartic protease and the type 1 kitinase. and we, again here you can see the densitogram so this is the relative amount of the protein in the gel and you can see that in average uh, the BSA treatment induced the secretion of the protein the best. So this again nicely match with the result from the qPCR uh, from the qPCR experiments and uh, finally the enzyme activity in the digestive fluid. You can also see that the BSA was uh, the BSA triggered the highest enzyme activity. Uh, so this is the proteolytic activity and this is the endokitinase activity. Of, of the enzyme. So BSA was really, really very, very effective. And this is also hold for, for the passive pitcher traps. You know that the Nepenthes or the Saracenia or other carnivorous plants with passive pitcher traps uh, don't generate any electrical signals and they rely on the chemical stimuli from the prey. So we also published this year the paper where we analyzed the, the gene expression uh, in the carnivorous plants with the passive trapping mechanism. We use this commercial hybrid Nepenthes mixta which produce, it's easy to cultivate, produce large features so we have enough digestive fluid to do the experiments. And uh, we focused on, uh, on the genes uh, which are known from these carnivorous plants which encode the nepenthesines. Nepenthesines are the aspartic proteases which digest the proteins in, in, in the pitcher plant and uh, we focus on the nepenthesine 1 and nepenthesine 2 and then on two types of kitinases. The first one is the kitinase from is the type 3 kitinase and the type 4 kitinase. And we have also the control, we had also the control traps so they were empty without any food and then uh, we edit the, the prey, uh, we use the mealworm, they are quite easy for manipulation. Uh, then we edit the BSA, so the protein, we edit uh, the ammonium, what is uh, the degradation product of uh, protein digestion and then we used again the chitin. And we found that all these compounds were able to upregulate the gene expression and the most effective was, was the ammonium. The ammonium was the most effective, so the degradation product from the proteins is probably responsible for this high upregulation of, <coughs> of, of the enzyme activity. But you can also see that the chitin was quite effective in induction of expression of the chitinase. Yeah. This is the BSA also. So all these, these chemical compounds were quite effective in induction of of uh, gene expression on what indicates that the plants which don't have the active trapping mechanism must only rely on these chemical signals from, from the prey. And uh, yeah, again we, we collected the digestive fluid, we have the antibodies, we can detect the proteins in digestive fluid and uh, we found that the BSA uh, or the proteins and partially also this ammonium chloride mimic uh, the presence of insect prey the best. So the proteins and its degradation products are uh, very, very good uh, inductors. Uh, and now, uh, this year 
we published the paper which attracted the huge media attention and this is the effect of the anesthesia uh, on the plants. So, uh, and we used uh, in this experiment the Venus flytrap because it's perfect plants where you can see the effect immediately if the plant is affected or is not. And here you can see some uh, definition of what the anesthesia is or what the anesthetics are. So the general anesthetics like uh, dietylator we use in our experiments are defined as a compounds that induce a reversible loss of consciousness in humans or loss of writing reflex in animals. Anesthesia can be also defined as a loss of responsiveness to environmental stimuli. And the clinical definition is, or is extended to include the lack of awareness to painful stimuli sufficient to facilitate the surgical application in clinical and veterinary practice. And it was known that anesthesia works on animals and humans and we found that the anesthesia also works on plants. And what we found is that they have the same target. They inhibit the generation of electrical signals. I will show you in the next few slides the experiment. So this is the structure of the dietylator. It's quite simple molecule. And you know the typical reaction of the Venus flytrap in this video. Two touches, two touch, yeah, two touch of trigger hairs and rapid rap closure, yeah, you know. And if the plant is exposed, was exposed uh, two hours under the diethyl ether vapor, so it was under anesthesia, repeated mechanical stimulation, but nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the plant sleep. <laughs> it's not response to environmental stimuli, like human under anesthesia. And what is very important for anesthesia experiment is the recovery. Yeah? You must wake up after anesthesia, otherwise <laughs> it's not anesthesia, yeah, but <laughs> so you can see that this is the same trap and it is 10 minutes after removing of the ethylator. The closing response is restored. Yeah? We repeated the experiment with the wounding. You can see the control plants. Yeah. Yeah, rapid trap closure in response to wounding. The same wounding we, per we uh, perform in, in the previous experiments I show you. And under the diethylator, you can see that nothing happened. Yeah, the plant, again, is not able to sense the stimuli from the environment. The plant sleep. And again, very important is the recovery. So the same trap 10 minutes later. And you can see that the trap closure was recovered. So this indicates that anesthesia works on plants, like works in humans. They are able to wake up the plants after <laughs> the sleep. And we repeated this experiment with attached electrode to measure because I show you that the electrical signaling is important for rapid trap closure. So we repeated this experiment with attached electrode on the trap. And what we found is what we expected. Uh, here you can see that in response to wounding and in response to mechanical stimulation, there is no electrical signals generated in response to stimuli. Yeah. Here, here, here is the control. So typical action potential. But if you remove the diethylator, you just open the, the back or, yeah, so you release the, the ether from, from, from the back and you can see here 
that the small action's potential appeared after 100 seconds. And the amplitude is increasing, and after 10 minutes, the, actions, the amplitude of the action potential is comparable to control plants. Yeah? Would nicely match with the thing that the trap is able to close again. And this holds for wounding as well as for the mechanical stimulation. Now you know the signaling pathway. Venus flytrap used for prey detection. And the next step, of course, was the quantification of jasmonates in the trap tissue. And what we found is quite interesting. Here you can see the mechanical stimulation and the wounding. And here is the level of the jasmonates. This is the jasmonic acid and this is the isoleucine conjugate of jasmonic acid, so the bioactive molecule. Here, <coughs> here you can see the plants in the air and here the plants kept on the diethyl ether. And in the control plants kept in the air you can see the typical reaction, a huge accumulation of jasmonic acid and huge accumulation of jasmonic acid isoleucine conjugate. But in the case of the diethyl ether, there is no increase of jasmonic acid because you inhibit the electrical signaling. So you inhibit the downstream reaction after electrical signaling, you inhibit the accumulation of jasmonates. And very similar in the case of wounding, where we found small increase in response to, to wounding un under the diethyl ether, but this increase was really small in comparison to, to control plants. There are also analysis of other plant phytohormones, but there were no significant changes. So, and the next step in the signaling pathway is activating the gene expression. And here you can see uh, our data from the gene expression analysis. Uh, this is the control trap, mechanically stimulated trap, control trap, and mechanically stimulated trap under the air, in the air and under the diethyl ether. So you can see that if there is no jasmonic acids accumulated, there is no upregulation of gene expression. Yeah. So under the diethyl ether, the venous flytrap is not able to produce the digestive enzyme, is not able to sense the environment. There is no accumulation of jasmine, no induction of gene expression. And the same holds also for the chitinase. Yes, you can see a rapid and huge increase in the air, in thousands and hundreds fold, but under the diethyl ether, there is no induction of gene, gene expression. And the same holds also for the wounding, yeah, in this case. Uh, quite interesting result is that if you apply the jasmonic acid exogenously on the venous flytrap, which is kept under the diethyl ether, so it's under anesthesia, you can induce the gene expression. Yeah. So we bypassed the signaling by a direct application of the jasmonic acid. And the gene expression is restored. And so here you can see the signaling pathway we know from the plant defense mechanism. And we now know that they also work in carnivorous plants. So the anesthetics inhibit the generation of the actions potentials I showed you. And this means that all downstream reaction in the signaling cascades are inhibited. So there is no accumulation of jasmonates and no expression of, of digestive enzyme or carnivore related genes. But if you apply the jasmonic acid exogenously, so <coughs> you bypass this signaling pathway you can induce the gene expression. Yeah. So this nicely indicates that the action's potential is the primary target for the anesthesia in plants. Because if you applied the chemical signals, the phytohormones which accumulate in response to electrical signals, you can restore the, the gene expression. And now I would like to show you some similarity between animals, human and plants. 
What happened during tissue injury in animals and humans? Maybe you know, maybe you not. I, I told you. Tissue injury in, in, in animals and humans uh, triggers one enzyme, which we call as cyclooxygenase 2 in peripheral tissue, which convert uh, one arachnoid acid to prostaglandins. This, this is the prostaglandins. And prostaglandins in animals and human uh, can stimulate the neurons, which send the message to do your brain where you recognize the pain, actually. And everybody knows the drugs like aspirin or ibuprofen, which we use if we have a painful stimuli. And these drugs inhibit this enzyme. So no prostaglandins are synthesized. So there is no chemical messenger which activate the, the, the neurons which send the message to, to your brain. And what is the most interesting fact is the structure of prostaglandins. The structure of the prostaglandins you can see here, human prostaglandins, is very similar to the structure of the jasmonates molecule in the plants. So we call the prostaglandins as a pain molecule in animals and humans because it sensitizes the spinal neurons for the pain. And we know that the jasmonates are phytohormones and we call them as the warning molecule in plants because it warned the plants that it was attacked by the herbivore. Yeah. So the question is, feel the plant's pain? They have the same molecule, like animals and humans. And they, these molecules are from the same groups of molecules we called as oxylipines. Okay? The oxylipines molecules uh, in two different organisms. And what is the most interesting, it's not our study, but it is known for, for decades, is that the aspirin, which blocks the COX-2 enzymes, so no prostaglandins are synthesized in the response to aspirin, also blocks the synthesis of jasmonates in the plants because they inhibit the same enzyme in the biosynthetic pathway. So as you can inhibit the pain in animals and humans, you can inhibit the warning production of the warning molecule in the plants, the jasmonates. And it was found that by this way, the aspirin prevents wound induced gene expression in tomato leaves by blocking the jasmonic acid biosynthesis. So this is quite interesting, uh, quite interesting comparison between animals and plants and the analgesic like the aspirin can block the the, the warning signaling pathway in animals and humans and plants. And we found that anesthesia have very similar effect. Here you can see the experiment quite all from the journal of anesthesiology. If you apply the, the anesthet anesthetics to, to isolated uh, neurons, known as the nociceptors, those are neurons which are responsible for, the, for the, uh, sensing the pain, you inhibit the generation of electrical signals. And I showed you that the same happens in the venous flytrap. So if the plant is exposed to anesthesia, you block the electrical signaling. So there is the same target. But until now, we exactly don't know the target because it's in the medicine, uh, the target, we know that we know a huge group of anesthesia. We know a target of some, but for some anesthesia like dietylator is still a mystery. What is the target uh, of, of, probably it is the membrane or probably it is some proteins in the membranes which is involved in, in, in generation of these electrical signals. But uh, there is some differences between the plants and animals in, uh, in, in, in its effect to, to anesthesia. Uh, the production of oxylipins in plant is mainly downstream from electrical signaling. So the jasmonates accumulate in the response to electrical signals, but uh, uh, in animals it is upstream. So first the warning molecule is released from the injured tissue and this 
molecule sensitize the neurons to generate the electrical signal. So there is a switch, but uh, but quite uh, but quite similar uh, target. So the inhibition of electrical signals. And in our recent study, we also documented that this is not only true for the venous flytrap, but all plants are sensitive to anesthesia. Probably you know this. This sensitive plant, the mimosa. So here is the mimosa, which responds to touch by the leaf folding. And here you can see the mimosa plant under anesthesia. What is uh, really interesting? <laughs> so there is no response, like in Venus flytrap. We suggest that there is the same problem. The Mimosa is not able to generate electrical signals. Uh, and what is most interesting uh, fact is that this is the experiment uh, we conducted under the diethyl ether atmosphere, but you can also apply the local anesthetic like lidocaine. Lidocaine is a local anesthetic which used uh, dentists, for example. And if you lidocaine apply to the roots of mimosa, <laughs> you can inhibit also these leaf folding reactions. Okay, mimosa is still quite interesting and not very common plants, but we uh, tested the effect of anesthesia on the pea plants, which is much more common. And you know, this is again the time-lapse video where you can see the tendrils, how they move for looking the object. Yeah, because it's climbing, climbing plants, so it's looking for, for the object to touch. Here, here is the time, yeah, so it's, it's a time lapse. And, okay, what the pea plants do under anesthesia? Nothing. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but if you remove the deity letter, it's again is looking for, for object. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, are in the end. So here are some of the take home message from from my talk. Uh, Digestive enzyme secretion in carnivorous plants is regulated by a lipid derived hormones from the group of jasmonates. They are synthesized in response to wounding or the herbivore attack in ordinary plants. But I showed you that in response to pre-capture, the carnivorous plants also accumulate the jasmonates, what indicates that the botanical carnivory has probably evolved from these plant defense mechanisms. The carnivorous plants can be easily misled by the wounding. So this indicates that the carnivory and the plant uh, defense mechanism share the same signaling pathway, we know it's the jasmine signaling pathway. And uh, what is important for carnivorous plants, how to recognize the digestible prey is the chemical signals. Yeah, the chemical signals from the prey are very important and we find that the proteins is, is the best one uh, for, for the carnivorous plant. And I showed you how the anesthesia can affect the sensibility of plants, which is very similar to effect of anesthesia in, in animals and uh, humans. So uh, the results I show you is a lot of work and a lot of time and hours in the laboratory. And uh, I would like to thank all my collaborators, which helped me with uh, the experiments, with the analysis. So first there is, uh, Professor Franciszek Bauschka and Kenio Kawa from the University of, of Bonn in Germany. Here are my colleagues from uh, Palacki University in Olomouc in, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, my PhD student and Andrzej Novak, they were responsible and helped me with uh, the analysis of the phytohormones. And uh, also my PhD students uh, from the Comenius uh, University in Bratislava in Slovakia. Uh, uh, Miroslav Krausko, Michaela Libiakova, Michaela Saganova, Boris Bokor, who helped me with uh, uh, the analysis of uh, gene expression in, in the gene in, in qPCR experiment. So here are some paper we published on this topic. So if you are interested in, uh, you can find 
uh, them on, on the web and I think that it's all. And thank you for, for your attention. Yeah, so many questions. <laughs> to defense. So usually the plants which activate the jasmine signaling pathway lower or, or decrease the gene expression of, of the genes which are responsible for photosynthesis. For example, the proteins of the photosystem, the Rubisco enzymes, which is very important for, for carbon dioxide assimilation and increase the expression of genes and the proteins which are involved in the plant defense. So if you, if you uh, want, if you cut the plants, if you uh, repot the plants, these are the events when the jasmonates are produced. So in, in the propagation by the cuts and all these things, you can induce the gene expression or, of genes which are involved in defense and you decrease the expression of the genes which are involved in the plant growth and reproduction. So maybe if you do this under anesthesia, you turn off the signaling and maybe you will have a better success rate in your cuttings of Nepenthes plants or everything, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that uh, there is some possibility to use in, in, uh, in the horticultural practice in, in this case. <laughs> yeah? plants which activate the jasmine signaling pathway also also induce uh, expression of genes which are responsible for scavenging uh, of example the hydrogen peroxide which are responsible for the cell death yeah so so they are, they can induce the suppression of uh, they can induce the expression of gene which suppress the these these uh, let's say harmful molecule Yeah. Have you tried artificially using any of the other upstream molecules? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. In regards to the uh, wounding stimulus uh, triggering the digestive enzymes and trap closure, how much does that have to do with a shared ancestral signaling pathway versus additional defensive mechanisms with, with the uh, trap closure and the digestive enzymes? Uh, sorry, probably I don't understand. Uh, with I don't catch the, the beginning of your question. <laughs> uh, with with the, the wounding stimulus also triggering digestive enzymes and yeah. trap closure, how much does that have to do with a, a shared evolutionary signaling pathway versus 
additional defensive mechanisms with the trap closure and the, the digestive enzymes. Does, does the digestive enzymes and the trap closure also provide defense? Uh, whew, it's difficult to say, but uh, yeah, we can just hypothesize uh, how this happens. So maybe you know that uh, if the pitcher plant traps some insect, the insect very often can bite their way out from, from the pitchers. So it's uh, highly probably that uh, these first primitive traps which capture the, the insect, uh, the insect very often damage the, the traps uh, in his efforts to escape from the, from the trap. So it's highly probable that the signaling pathway uh, from the plant defense mechanisms were during the evolution co-opted for, for, for a digestive process. And if the plant uses the same enzyme for defense like the kitinases, yeah, so, why not, so why not use the enzyme for, for, uh, for digestion of, of, of the prey? So it's just speculation how, how, how it can evolve, but we don't know. <laughs> Okay.